this simulator is going to show uh, a car changing its position uh, versus time. It's going to graph it as the car is moving along. And you can see based on the curved line that the car is accelerating, covering more distance in each time interval. So I've taken the data from that sim and used time intervals of 0.5 seconds and the distance uh, changes and just put them in uh, Google Sheet. I highlighted all of that and I selected the graph option to insert and it gave me an automatically selected line chart for me. Now I'm just going to go through the different steps uh, of how to edit and manipulate these graphs. So the first thing here that I want to show you is I want to add data points. So it was just giving me a curve, so I want to actually have data points. You can change what the data points look like, triangles, stars, squares. Uh, I'm going to keep it as a circle. You can change the color if you want as well. So the next thing I want to change are the grid lines. You want to make sure it's on count. Now the major grid line, uh, I can change that, but I think what's going to end up happening is I'm okay with it being uh, auto generated. So it went up 50, 100, 150. It's the minor one that I want to change. Now when you select uh, nine here, what it does is it gives you nine lines from uh, between this and the, the next, the major point that's labeled. So if you were to count from zero to 50, you'd have nine lines there. Now I want to uh, take care of the horizontal axis, make sure it's on count. And for the minor spacing, if I pick nine, it looks pretty good. It's like a nice grid. I could change the color and make it darker, but I'm going to leave it as auto. Okay, so there's my graph for that car. It's got the curved line and I have the data points. Now I want to highlight a couple of individual data points. So I'm just gonna, uh, one way to do it is click on it, on the data point you wanna uh, change, and then go to series. And at the bottom here, you'll see an option for format data point. And then you can pick from this drop down menu, a specific data point based on, in this case, based on position. So, all of those uh, different position data points, you could pick one of them and change it, doing it this way. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to like double click on a specific data point until this window shows up on the right. Now the color, I want to change the color of that data point. So that data point right there is at 7 seconds and 50 centimeters. So I'm going to change another one. Let's do 4 seconds. Double click it. This window comes up for the chart editor. I want to change that data point, format that data point to red. Okay, that's it. So in order to get the slope on this graph, I'm going to need to copy it and then insert it into um, a document. I'm going to go to the document and hit insert new drawing. When I get to the new drawing, I'm going to paste the chart from the sheet, paste it unlinked. You can paste it linked if you like. Uh, what that means is if you make any changes to the original file, it, it'll update the chart that you have pasted in this document. 
All right, so I'm zooming in. I want to uh, get the slope at this point. Now this is, again, this is seven seconds. And I'll just make a little mark on the x-axis here to show where exactly this lands. And then you can count the spaces. Uh, those little boxes go up by 0.2. So 6.2, 6.4, 6.6, 6.8, and then 7.0 seconds. So I'm just going to label that in there. So I put a text box in. Those three dots to the right give me more options. So I wanted to change the font size, uh, the font color, and things like that. So when you hit those three buttons, uh, those three dots, uh, this little drop-down menu uh, appears, and you can uh, make some more edits to the text box. All right, so I move it in place, and there's my seven seconds. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to uh, draw my tangent line at seven seconds. So I pick the line option, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it until it looks like it's parallel to where it'll touch that circle for seven seconds at one point tangent to it. And right, now I'm just moving it in place, getting it really close. It looks pretty good, but you know maybe there's some adjustments I need to make. Now, I'm showing you, you can grab the end here of the line, and you can move it, and it shows you where the original line is. So you can kind of use that as a reference for the little changes that you need to make. So I'll show you that again. Okay, so there's the original line. Just moving the whole thing a little bit. Now, if I grab up here the, this corner... make some small changes. You can see how the original line was still there. I right, see, so ready? So it's showing me the new line that I'm making while the original one is still there. So this is kind of just how you can make an edit to that line. So I'm just going to keep making some small adjustments. I'm going to change the color. This looks pretty good. So I think I can work with this. Okay, I'm just kind of looking at my tangent line and just trying to get an idea ahead of time of the points I want to take. I want to try to get points that are going to be easy to figure out what the x, y uh, value and the y value are. So I'm just going to move the line a little bit up here. It'll make it, make it a little easier if I can have it cross, if I can have my tangent line go where uh, the grid lines cross. So that's all I'm doing here is just trying to locate the points that are going to be uh, best for um, finding the slope. What I'm going to do now is I want to grab uh, a shape, uh, you know, a circle, and put it on the points that I'm going to use. So I grab the shape, make a circle about that size. Uh, go here. I don't want it filled, so make that transparent. I'm going to make the line red because the tangent line is red. I need two of these points, so I'm just going to duplicate it. So now I've got two. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to move it. So I'm taking, I'm going to move it to my first point. So right there looks like a good data point because that's where the horizontal and vertical grid lines cross. Let me just move it a little bit more. That should be good. I'm going to do the same thing with this. This other data point, I'm going to move it down here. And at four seconds, which is uh, convenient, I have a cross. So that's a good location. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna put the labels in for what the values are at these data point locations. I wanna format my text box. I'm gonna go to uh, six point font, make it red. All right, so parentheses, my X final equals, and this is located, if I follow that all the way down, uh, 8.4. Okay, so that's 8.4 seconds. Right, now I need to find my Y value for this. This is the Y final. Do a little more editing on this text box. As a shortcut, if you want to do subscripts when you're typing, you do control comma, and that'll allow you to type in a subscript. If you want to type a superscript, it would be control period. And then to get out of that uh, superscript or subscript mode, you just uh, do control comma or control period again. So I'm just following that data point uh, along over to the vertical axis to see where it hits, right? And so this main line here is 50. So if I go up, it goes up by fives, uh, 55, 60, 65 meters. Now I wrote meters, that's incorrect. It should be centimeters. Uh, I'll make a note of that later. So this distance is centimeters uh, and the time is seconds. All right now I duplicated that text box just to save myself some editing time and I'm changing these uh, Fs to Is for X initial and Y initial. And then I just need to change um, the values here. So that's four seconds, 4.0. And again, these go up by fives. So that's five and it should be centimeters. Okay, now that I have the data points that I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna duplicate one of those text boxes, again, just to save formatting time. So I'm gonna take the, da the data there and I'm gonna actually do the calculation for slope. Now remember, uh, the slope of a tangent line on a distance versus time graph or position versus time graph will give me instantaneous velocity. So when I get the slope of this tangent line at seven seconds, it's going to tell me how fast the car is going at that instant. Now slope, uh, the variable for slope is lowercase m, and it's equal to rise over run, or the change in y divided by the change in x. So I'm gonna take my y final, 65 meters, minus my y initial, which is five meters, divided by my x final, 8.4 seconds, minus my x initial, which is four seconds. we end up with 60 meters divided by 4.4 seconds, which comes out to 13.6 meters per second. Again, it should be centimeters per second. If we round that to a whole number, we would get an instantaneous velocity of 14 should be centimeters per second. I'm just gonna do a little more formatting of uh, this answer, the text box answer, so people can see it a little bit better. So I highlighted the final answer there, uh, made it bold, and I'm gonna change the background of this text box so that the grid lines behind it don't um, cause confusion, make it harder to read. So I'm gonna choose in this case, uh, what does gray look like? Let's go with, uh, stick with the red theme. 
you can choose whatever you like. I think, you know, sometimes white is good. You just don't want those grid lines to kind of make it hard to read. Save and close, and it puts it in the doc. So all those edits are there. So when someone submits that document, uh, they'll be the whoever reads it will be able to see all that information. Just a couple more edits. I'm going to change the font, make it a little bigger. Okay, let's go back to the same sim, but change uh, the option so that we can see the slope as um, the line is being generated. Let's see how I did. Let's go back to seven seconds, and the slope is 14. Again, should be centimeters per second.